It's the new year, it's the new decade, and it's time for some new technology. So over the past few days, I've started what is known as the 100 Days of Code Challenge. And this is usually targeted for developers who are just learning how to code and are just getting into computer science. And they essentially do a self-series where they code for at least one hour every single day. And that's what I'm aiming to do. For a precursor, I'm gonna apologize for my microphone. I am using my crappy computer microphone until I get a good one. But I just felt so passionately about doing this that I felt like I just use whatever I could. So the 100 Days of Code Challenge is usually started by new developers, but I am not a new developer. I actually been programming since I was 13 years old. I took all the computer science classes that were offered at my high school, and even after I graduated, I built websites, applications, uh, softwares, and even helped other businesses uh, with their own softwares as well. So what is this project? This project is going to be a decentralized stock exchange. So I'm sure people are already familiar with the basic functionalities of a regular stock exchange, where people buy shares of a company through the stock exchange or they already have ownership of shares and they sell it on the stock exchange and now trade it on a platform as well. And you're probably wondering, well, what's the difference between having a centralized stock exchange and a decentralized stock exchange? Some benefits to a centralized stock exchange, they, in a sense, act as a bank. Uh, you deposit money in and you have the money in an account until you are ready to trade it. And they are essentially the mediary for you to trade that money on a stock exchange. Um, there are the owners of your funds. They follow rules and regulations of the government, which they have to be in full compliance of because when you're dealing with people's money, that's sensitive data, not only sensitive data, but a sensitive resource. And they, they are also safe to some degree, depending on the broker that you're going through and then depending on the exchange as well. Decentralized exchanges, on the other hand, some of the benefits they provide is one, there's no need for KYC because you can essentially be anonymous on the network. No one really needs to know who you are. Uh, all they really need to know if you have the funds to be able to trade because everything is handled through smart contracts. There's no deposit or withdrawal minimum that's required. The funds are coming directly from your wallet, so you essentially use that to trade with. It, it all happens peer-to-peer -peer through what are called smart contracts, and what smart contracts are essentially code that dictate and facilitate transactions on a network. I'll get more into that later in the series. Decentralized exchanges also have no single point of failure. So, for example, if Robinhood was to go down today, then everyone would lose their money. Whereas decentralized exchanges are hosted through on the blockchain uh, with the respective nodes to essentially help keep it running. And the fees on the network are negligible because the only fees you're really paying for is the transaction fee of the currency of which you are trading with. The biggest thing that decentralized exchanges offer is they have a high liquidity. Uh, usually when you trade on exchange, you have to wait three to five business days, whereas decentralized exchanges, uh, the money you are using, you could use that right away. So that is one of the biggest advantages for those. So now that we have the basics out of the way, I'm going to walk you through what I've done so far over the past five days. So I'm going to make a video every five to six days just to uh, summarize what I did over the past few days. And when it comes down to the coding aspect of it, I'm going to skim over a lot of things. But for a lot of the more technical aspects and a lot of the core concepts, I'm going to dive deeper into just so that for the beginning developers who either don't know anything about blockchain technology or just nothing about coding at all they won't be too lost in uh the series as well so over the past five days i didn't really do any coding at all and that's okay for this series because when you start any new project the first day you're not really going to do any code what you're more likely going to be doing is planning out things and I know everyone's different, but that's just something for me. If I don't really have a roadmap of what I'm going to build, then it's just going to make the code all messy and you're going to do a lot of double backing. And that's just not something that I'm 
uh, want to do. So on the first day, uh, you can see it on my Instagram or Twitter. And I was actually inspired to do this 100-day code challenge by Napoleon. Because he was already doing a 100-day challenge. So I thought, well, I'm going to get in on the grind too. The first day, I was just thinking of ideas what to do. And while I was watching uh, Daps University video, uh, he's also a YouTuber that I'll link down below. He was just talking about decentralized exchanges. So I was thinking about ideas. I thought about doing a vending machine. I thought about doing a task manager. I just wanted to do something that wasn't the traditional to-do list or the traditional chat room or the traditional Facebook clone. I wanted to do something a little bit more interesting. And so that's when I came with the decentralized stock exchange. Now, the second day, I moved into more of the research, market research. And when you're doing any project, whether it be coding or whether it be starting a new business or whether it be anything of the sort, you wanted to have some kind of market research done. And what I mean by market research is find out what is needed, what is necessary, what is a solution that you're trying to solve. Because I'm just going to be honest, just because you add some bells and whistles to something new, not everyone's going to pretty much rush to it. What people rush to is things that solves problems. And yes, it's a, it's a direct correlation of newer technology does solve the problems. That's why we, as human beings, invent and provide new ways to do things. But if you're just putting let's say a blockchain on the weather report just for the sake of putting a blockchain, it doesn't really resonate. So you, that's why when I was doing market research, I I actually came for me because I was trading on Robinhood and I was like, well, Robinhood isn't decentralized, it's centralized. Even though I feel like they have been one of the main uh, exchanges out there to push a lot of support for cryptocurrency, they're not a decentralized exchange. So I was like, boom, there we go, I got it. Now we go on the third day. The third day, I was just talking about GitHub mainly. And the reason why I was talking about GitHub is because when you set up your projects, GitHub is just a great way to, in a sense, store your code on there. Just So let's say you put your code on GitHub and you lost the code files on your computer well you can just access it from github from another computer and not only that it's just a great way to uh keep track for productivity wise you can see the last time you committed something you can see uh the last code that you wrote and it's even better when you're in a team and you're trying to keep track with everything and everyone's doing different things and finally the best thing about github is that you can get volunteer support so later on in the series i'll probably open up the decentralized stock exchange to be open source for you all to you could add on to it you could fork it to make your own decentralized stock exchange or whatever the case may be but that's one thing i just love about github now the fourth day i kind of just wrote down all the dependencies uh that i needed and there was a lot out there because i was using windows so i was actually trying to figure out how to set the project up and just doing a smoke test of it all because that's something that's crucially important especially if you're a new developer uh there's a lot of times where old, old packages that you might be using for one project has an update and you gotta figure out what they did differently or if you hasn't touched project in a while and you try to come back to it and they ask for an update and that's something you have to keep track with as well so i just basically just wrote down all the dependencies and added them in the project and i'll show that in the next section of me actually walking you all through that too and in the fifth day i just sat back and enjoyed the new year and that's pretty much everything i explained about centralized and decentralized exchanges i talked about day one two three four and five of the project all in all that's about it in the next section i'm gonna talk about we're going to actually get into some meat. Next video, uh, we're going. I'm going to do more so showing you the planning, um, show about mock-ups. I'm also going to show you more about flow charting, how I did the smoke test, and then we'll just go on the series from there. I thank you for listening to this uh, video. Be sure to hit subscribe to stay in tune with more content coming in the future. And if you just want to follow me on social media and see all the crazy things I'll be up to, you can feel free to... Uh, Follow me on my personal Instagram where it's going to be more about development. And also my Crypto Priest 
Instagram too. That one I talk more about just cryptocurrency and blockchain as a whole down in the description as well. Hope you all have a fantastic new year. Make good choices and I will see you. Ta-ta.